All right, in this problem, we are supposed to solve for the node voltages. So what I'm doing in most of the problems in today's uh, handout is to show how to use the techniques that you learned in circuits one and apply them to AC circuits. And so all the good stuff you learned, like nodal analysis and mesh analysis, you can use those with AC circuits as well. And we're going to do that here. So even though it looks like this problem is set up uh, to do mesh analysis, it's because this circuit diagram was used in more than one uh, problem. So we're going to do nodal analysis on it. And by any chance, do you recognize uh, something about this circuit when we're doing nodal analysis? Is there something special about it? Right, and, and do you know what that means we can do? So, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's what I was looking I'm for. I can't remember the name, but... A super node. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when we, our two nodes have a voltage source in between them, um, then we can uh, say that we, we're going to do a super node. So rather than writing one voltage equation for V1 and one for V2, we're going to write one for V1 and V2 together. But first, we're going to write our equation for our super node, which says that the positive, the positive side of the voltage source minus the negative side of the voltage source equals what the voltage is. So our first equation is V1 minus V2 equals 10 angle zero. Um, this circuit is already transferred for us, transformed for us into the phasor domain, so we don't have to transform it. And because it is transformed, you just treat all of the elements like resistors. And so um, our current, we're going to sum all the currents coming out of the node. And the current is going to equal um, VA minus VB over Z, where VA is where you're starting from. So starting from V1. I would have V1, and I'm going to go down here, V1 minus 0 over 10, plus V1 minus 0 over J20. And then because it's a super node, I'll go over to V2, and I'll say plus V2 minus 0 over 15, uh, plus V2 minus 0 over minus J5. And all that has to equal 0. So V1 over 10 plus V1 over J20 plus V2 over 15 plus V2 over minus J5 equals 0. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, I could do this without a calculator, but I'm just going to show you all how to do it on the calculator. I'll factor the V1 out of my two V1s, and I have 1 over 10 plus 1 over J20. And I'll factor the V2 out of those, and I'll have V2 1 over 15 plus 1 over minus J5 equals 0. And then on my calculator, I'll do 1 over 10 plus 1 over I20. And it will get it to me as uh, 1 over 10 minus 1 over 20J. V1. Um, actually, I didn't, don't need to do this because, okay, yeah, I really don't need to do this because 1 over J is the same as minus J. So the only reason for doing the calculator on this was to get the J's out of the denominator because you can't have the J's in the denominator, but that's easy enough to do. You just bring it to the top and make it negative. So I'll just do that on this one. So that's plus V2 
times 1 over 15, and that would be plus 1 fifth j equals 0. Uh, and then, so I don't know if my calculator will do this or not, but we'll try it. So I have 1 over uh, minus 1 over 20 j v1 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 5 j v2. That's one equation. And my other equation is v1 minus v2 equals 10 angle 0. Now, my calculator has um, uh, a feature for um, solving a uh, system of equations. It's called SysSolve. It's above the tangent. So I'll press second and SysSolve. And this is a two by two equation. And so my first number, and I'll do a fraction. Okay, so it's not going to let me put the fraction in. So the first number is 1 divided by 10 minus j or i uh, times 1 divided by 20. Enter. Oh uh, no. Okay. So it won't. It won't do. It won't do the the equations for me. Okay. All right. So too much for. Too bad for that. All right. So um, I'm going to multiply this top equation through um, by sixty to get rid of the fractions. So that'll give me six minus j three v one plus 4 plus j12 v2 equals 0. And then at this point, I'm going to use the fact that 10 angle 0 is just 10 and say v1 equals 10 plus v2. And then I'll substitute that in for v1. So 6 minus j3 times 10 plus v2 equals 4, and I'm sorry, plus 4 plus j12 v2 equals 0. So y'all stop me if you see me make any mistake here. Um, so this is going to be Sixty minus J thirty plus six V two minus J three V two plus four plus J twelve V two equals zero. So I've got uh, my two V two terms. So I've got, I can combine these 10 plus J9 V2 equals minus 60 plus J30. Or V2 equals minus 60 plus J30 over 10 plus J9. And it's the right answer. Yeah. Okay. So um, I what what I did, I just uh, put minus 60 plus I30 over 10 plus I9 in the calculator. It gave it to me as a fraction, thinking that would be helpful. I said that's not helpful, and I pressed the approximate button. 
um, and that's still in rectangular form and then I said change it to polar form and I get that V2 equals 4.986 angle 111 degrees um, and then I know that V1 equals 10 plus V2 now it's hard to um, add and subtract things in polar form um, with, without a calculator and so but with a calculator it's not bad so I can just take this plus 10 and change that to polar form and I get that V2 is 9.4 angle 29.6 degrees so if y'all didn't do that on the calculator go ahead and practice doing that because um, doing the for me, it's the doing the calculations is the hardest part of this. It's not so bad setting up the equations. It's actually getting the answers. And it's V1 equals 9.4. Yeah, you're right. It's V1. Thank you. And so from the V2 equals minus 60, that's where you can stop using the calculator. That's where I started using the calculator. That was your question? Yeah. Yeah. From here on out, it was all calculator. So I'm going to...